Hello, welcome to this new parent webinar. My name is Nikki Stewart and I'll be talking to you today about supporting your children with their anxiety. So I work at your school, I look after the wellbeing program. I'm also a BACP accredited counsellor. I use an integrative approach with my clients. I look after um, clinical supervision and I also am a mental health first aid England uh, instructor. So I've had placements in the past. I've had 13 years experience working in my field of mental health services. Um, so today we're going to be looking at what is anxiety? What is a worry for your child? Uh, we're going to look at anxiety during uh, the pandemic and helping your children to manage their anxieties as well. And also self-care for you, uh, looking at boundaries and sleep as well. So we're facing this pandemic, things are uh, slowing down a little bit. We are uh, seeing the peak come down, but we're still having that experience of living in a different environment. We may be seeing people out and about with face masks on, so children are still experiencing the effects of this pandemic. So it is normalizing it for them, sort of seeing that and feeling tense, maybe being uh, unable to focus, or even having racing thoughts for ourselves as well as our children. And these are all signs of stress and anxiety does present itself differently uh, between children and also in adults. So it's really good to recognize that in yourselves as well. So this is an image I always use children if they come to see me on a one-to-one -one or in a group session. It's really nice to be able to give some psychoeducation around what is anxiety. So if we look at this image here, we see this cave person, we see this hungry dinosaur. And I always invite the children to answer how would they survive if they were faced with this hungry dinosaur? And this takes us back into that primal sort of state where we would have to either run, fight or freeze to try and survive. And really, we take it back and strip back the layers of our sort of evolution. We do go back to this state of being able to survive in the face of this hungry dinosaur. Now, whilst we may not have hungry dinosaurs wandering the earth today, we still have other areas that can trigger this fight, flight or freeze response for us. So again, I always ask the children to choose. So it could be that they maybe run, they run for their lives, as you can see here, uh, the cave person's running away. We could see somebody sort of stand and fight, or we can also see an animal or a person even go into the freeze response, as you see here, this deer in the headlights. And that is a physiological response to anxiety and danger. So there is a choice here with worries, and you may find that children deal with worries in different ways. So what is anxiety? Why do we have it? Well, it is normal. Let's normalise it first. It enables us to get things done. Um, we may think of it as being stressed, tense, anxious, worried, scared. And it is a normal reaction to everyday life and it helps us get things done when we need to. But it can become prolonged and sustained and sometimes that's when it becomes a mental health issue. So we know the fight, flight or freeze response can have a physiological response within our bodies. So sometimes children may say to you that they've got a little bit of a tummy ache or a headache, or they might notice their heart beating a bit faster or they're, they're breathing a bit deeper. These can be all stress reactions. It's really important that we keep an eye on that. So we have two systems within us. Um, the autonomic nervous system has the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system allows us to rest and digest and the, the sympathetic nervous system puts us into that fight flight response. So we have those two systems within us and it's important that we help children to trigger the parasympathetic nervous system. And we're going to look at ways we can do that here. So it's important also to notice how anxiety presents itself in your children because it will be very different for every child. Um, sometimes you may notice it's a difficulty in getting to sleep. Um, they may feel angry or agitated. Um, there could be some sort of challenging behaviours that you're seeing more than usual. They could also put high expectations on themselves and want to get schoolwork perfect. They want to control the events, get things done. Or they could even be avoiding events. So you could have school refusal or you could have a refusal to do Zoom lessons. And we talked earlier about the stomach ache and the headaches. There could be that too. And it could be even a focus issue. When we're in that heightened state of arousal and fear, they can be really hard to pay attention and focus. And you may notice an intolerance of uncertainty. Some children really need to know the whys and the hows. So if they are returning to school, it may have been that they rehearsed that journey. How is it going to be? What's going to happen when they're at school? So it's important we're aware of that. 
Uh, there could also be sort of some meltdowns. You might notice that they're crying more often than usual. They may be finding it hard to manage their emotions. Uh, there could be sort of that focusing on over planning or feeling worried about things that you, they don't normally worry about. So you're noticing sort of a, uh, an over worrying there. So we're going to look at different strategies to support your children with this. So we noticed there one of the coping strategies may be anger. Now we can see on this um, anger iceberg here, we see the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg is above the water line. So we might see reactions from our children like, I just want to go to the park or I don't know how to do my online work. Or you, if you have children at home that have got siblings, they may be irritating each other. They may have become more possessive about certain toys. They may become more boundaried about their bedrooms. And all of this shows that there's some feelings going on underneath the iceberg. So there could be a sense of sadness. They could feel loss. They're missing their friends. And then really at the bottom of the iceberg, right hidden under the waterline, there could be a fear. And the fear is that their family may get ill. They, you may get ill. They might get ill themselves. So this is a pandemic that we're all living through. And there's fears here that have not been expressed and they're hard to verbalize at times. So it's important that as parents, we're aware of that as well. So how are we going to support our children? Now I really advocate this PACE approach. Now PACE is an acronym um, that was put together by a doctor, Dr. Dan Hughes, who's an amazing trauma specialist in America. Now he uses this to support any children and you can use it at home as well. So PACE stands for being playful, um, having acceptance, being curious and having empathy. So this is a lovely graphic um, that just explores that approach with children. So being playful yourselves with them, you know, can I join in? Let's have a go, let's dance together, let's do something fun. And having playful times is really important during this time of anxiety. And try not to sweat the small stuff, let the little things go and sort of focus on the things that matter. And then there's that sense of acceptance, you know, sit with the uncomfortable feelings and have a sense of connection and really reinforce that they're loved no matter what. So sometimes their feelings can be overwhelming. They might show um, behaviours that are uncomfortable or something you don't like. But it's important that we sort of give that sense of unconditional positive regard. It's okay to have those feelings, but what's not okay is not to hurt yourself or to hurt others. It's important we give them strategies to let those feelings out in a safe way. And then being curious. Now, curiously, that curiosity will help us understand what's going on for our children. So using sentences, which I always like to say, is I wonder how you're feeling right now, not what's wrong with you. We sort of use that I wonder. So tell me about that. So let them open up, get into their world and find out what's going on for them. Because sometimes children find it really hard to verbalise how they're feeling. And that sense of empathy, we can see here in that speech bubble. So you can reflect and say, oh, you're so angry. I'll help you with these big feelings. No matter, I wonder you're upset. That must have been so hard. So we're showing empathy there. We're really understanding that they're feeling that sense of anger, but can't actually express that in a safe way. So using this PACE approach is really helpful when you're at home with your children. So interoception is that sense of what's going on inside the body. Sometimes children really struggle to verbalize and say, actually, mummy, daddy, auntie, uncle, I'm really finding it hard to tell you that I'm scared. I'm scared inside. They can't do it. So sometimes when they can't describe a feeling, always invite them to ask, say where they're feeling inside their body. So it could be that they have a sense of uh, a fluttery tummy, they could have a tightness in their chest, they could have a pain, a prickly pain in their head. If you get them to connect with a feeling, sometimes that's enough. It bypasses that need to be verbally expressive and it really sort of connects with the feeling. And sometimes that expression is enough to let that out. So we've spoken about the thoughts, feelings and actions will in a past webinar and it's really useful to just to come back to this and I really like this approach. It's a cognitive behavioural therapy approach and it looks at how our thinking affects how we feel and our subsequent actions. So if we can help children with those thoughts, if they're having negative thoughts, reoccurring thoughts, and we change those thoughts, it subsequently will change the feelings and then the actions. 
So it's really important that we don't react to the actions that we see that are unhealthy, that we really help them go back to the first part of the wheel, which is the thought. So if they're having worried thoughts, they'll feel worried, they'll feel withdrawn, they may feel irritable, and then they may act out differently. Whereas if we can change those thoughts, then we can change the feelings and the subsequent actions. So again, dealing with difficult feelings, it's really good to notice it, to name it, to sit with it and then let it go. Sometimes as parents, we go completely wanting to rescue or to ignore it or to distract. It's like somebody coming to knock at your door. And I always explain this to children in the therapy room. When we ignore a feeling, it's like somebody knocking at your door. The knocking gets louder and louder and louder until that feeling becomes so noisy that you can't ignore it. So if we go together to answer the front door to a feeling and see what message it wants to deliver, it will deliver the message and then it will dissipate, it will go. So it's really important we help children to answer the front door to those messages that they're being given. So again, I use these blobs. These blobs are a really good tool to help children verbalize feelings. So all the talk is about the blob, it's not about the child. So this is one I've adapted to use during coronavirus lockdown period. It enables the children, if I'm working on screen with the child, to be able to choose a blob they're feeling. Also using this mood scale. Now, having a mood ladder is really important because it enables children to see that all feelings are okay. Every feeling on that mood scale you see there in front of you is completely normal. So what we want to do is help children when they get to the five or six level to instigate some self-soothing cool down plan, which you can help them with to plan. So they notice that ladder moving up as it goes. So starting at one, it's calm, happy, it goes up, it starts to feel a little bit okay. Then maybe tired, confused, embarrassed, sad, lonely, a huge range of emotions. And you could even get them to create their own mood scale at home because it's individual to them. And then they can tell you which number they're feeling. So I would set an alarm level. So when they get to six, or seven that they start some cool down strategies now if they get to eight nine ten there's no way that they're coming down they have to go up to discharge so if we can get to them before and help them regulate before they get too high on the mood ladder then that will help them feel regulated and in control of those feelings that may feel overwhelming so we're going to use all of these strategies today to help you help your children so having a worry, it's all about balancing your worries. Worries are okay, but what happens is when they become too much, then they feel overwhelming. And as you can see here, this scale is a balance here. We need to find things that help the worries. So what coping strategies can children use? There's a lot on the menu. So it's about creating their own toolbox and choosing what works for them. It's individual. That's why we really have to give children the choice of what works for them. That's why I can't teach well-being at school. Well-being is something that has to be felt. So we provide the children with a menu and we ask them to choose what works for them. So it could be that your child likes to read. They could find some really good breathing exercises they like to do. They could actually name the feeling or they could reframe it and use some positive self-talk, we call that. They could find that playing a game with somebody helps with them or doing some yoga and our cosmic yoga is really good online or even doing artwork. And we know that being creative is so good for our well-being. Uh, and we know that our weekly buzz club, we do attend to our five ways to well-being. So if you want to really engage with that with your children, the buzz club videos are all on the school YouTube channel and also the buzz club channel. So if you want to access any of those, they're really good for emotional regulation also. So I like to call it a feelings toolbox. So in our one-to-one -one sessions, if I do see children, I always give them a lot of different tools to try. If it works, then it goes inside the toolbox and they keep it. If it doesn't work, then we discard it. And it's all about putting the children in charge there. They choose the tools that work for them. So always ask them what works for them. What, what is helpful? What made you feel better before? Let's try it, let's use it again. So one of the things I like to use and that you could invite your children to is to use of Play-Doh. Now Play-Doh is a really good tool for emotional expression because they're using it, they're holding it, they're, they're molding it. So there's a sense of using three of the senses there, the sight, sight a sense of smell and a sense of touch. 
And where sometimes children can't express a feeling, they can't say to you, I'm feeling worried, you could invite them to mould a feeling in some worry, in some Play-Doh. So if we could see inside the body and we could see that worried feeling, I'm wondering what it looks like. Is it smooth, flat, spiky? Is it a mixture of colours? So get them to mould a feeling rather than to to describe it to you verbally. And sometimes just seeing that feeling molded in that Play-Doh can be really useful. And then you can ask them the question, okay, now you've molded that worry, what does that worry need? What would you like to happen to that worry? And it's really important this part, because this is the part where we then discharge. Now it could be that they maybe want to uh, put it in a box, uh, squash it, cut it up, lock it away, add another shape to it, and it's this part of the actual action that really helps them get rid of the worry, discharge the worry. So really pay attention to what they do with the shape once they've completed it. And that really is a, what we call emotional regulation. And if you haven't got Play-Doh at home, there is a Buzz Club video that helps you to make Play-Doh. If you can get hold of some flour and some salt. Uh, and that is one of the Buzz Club videos. So use this blob worry sheet as well. So everybody on the, every blob sheet here, you can see has feeling a different worry so which worry are you drawn to when you have a worry does it feel like you're drowning does it feel like you have to climb a mountain there's lots of different blobs there to explore a worry so using senses is really good you can use the five four three two one method now sometimes to bring children back into the room if they're feeling a bit wobbly or a bit upset you might invite them to use the five four three two one and again, there's a video on the Buzz Club channel for this. So five things they can see in the room, four things that they can feel, they can reach out and touch something, three things they may be able to hear in the room, two things that they may have smelt to that day, and one thing that they've tasted. Now you'll be really surprised that technique just brings people back down, and really calms and regulates them. So try that for yourselves. Then there's the worry dolls. These are fantastic resource. You can order these online. Um, these go under the children's pillow. And there's a lovely legend that says that if you tell a worry to the worry doll, overnight they take the worry away. And this is a really nice strategy. Sometimes it works with children, sometimes it doesn't. So have a go. And you can also make worry dolls. They're really nice to make out of pegs or some uh, dough or some, some sort of craft materials. These are lovely as well, Worry Monsters. You can get these online. Uh, they are available in the shops as well when they reopen. Now, the, the way this works is the child writes down a worry. They put it inside the Worry Monster, zip it up, and what happens is the Worry Monster then takes it away. So that's another way to, to deal with that worry if you think that would work for your child. There's also reading. Reading is amazing for well-being and also to help with worries. Now have a look at this list. I'll put the link to this reading agency list at the end of the webinar so that you can click on that if you need to see um, how to help your children. Choose a book. The books are, um, are really good for connecting with feelings and it allows the children to see that they're not the only person that has that feeling and it normalises it. The Unworry book, I really recommend this one. I have this one as well in the therapy room. It's got some really good resources in there that used, um, you can use with your children. I'll show you a few of the pages now. So this is a really nice way to help children to sort of map out the emotions map. How are they feeling? And all of those feelings are completely normal and okay. And then we've got peaceful pencil, pencils, this one's called. And it's sort of a mindfulness technique, really. And I always encourage children to try and draw or write with the hand that they don't normally write with, because that enables some connection to that feeling and uh, on the right side or left side of the brain as well. Then we could create a worry box. Worry boxes are really useful. Let the children sort of use their own imagination and craft. And then look at the Unworry Island. And this is a place where they can visit and it specially stops them having a worry time. So what does it look like when they haven't got a worry? Because sometimes we're so busy focusing on the worry, we don't actually focus on what it's like when they haven't got a worry. So really map that out for them. Look at what it looks like when they're feeling calm, relaxed and regulated. What does their Unworry Island look like? That way then they can recognize it and they do feel calm and regulated. So this is a nice graphic to help children if they are feeling sad instead of saying you know why are you crying what, what's what's wrong it's okay to be sad this is really hard for you I'm here with you tell me about it there's lots of lovely affirmations there to really reflect and regulate a child. 
Now, this may come up for you. I've added a few slides in here looking at bereavement and loss because this may be something, a factor in your children's worry as well at the moment. If there is a relative or somebody in your family that has had illness or that you may have gone through a loss of bereavement yourself. There's some lovely cards here by the National uh, Children's Bureau. So this one is to help someone if, if they're very ill. So children can sort of tick the boxes that really apply to them and it will help the grown-ups around them to sort of regulate and help. So for example, tick the box, listening to music that they like or eat their favorite food. And sometimes that makes them help, helps them feel closer to the person that's very ill at the time. Um, so I'll put the links to these resources at the end as well. So ideas to help you in your grief. So again, this is for some child, children that may have lost somebody through the COVID-19 pandemic or any other reason, because grieving at this time can be very difficult as well, because we can't attend funerals or grieve in our normal way. Um, and this is for the children to give to a parent or a, a carer as well. So let them tell you what they need. Let them lead the way. So again, as we're coming towards the end of the webinar, really, it's really important to remember the three R's, regulate, relate and reason. So help your children, soothe them, make them feel calm and regulated, really empathise with those feelings and reasons. So once they're calm, you can look at behaviours that you would like to see and reinforce those limits that you don't want to see. Some really nice self-holding techniques here. You can use these with your children. Sometimes at night, at bedtimes, they find it really hard to get to sleep. They can put the hands, for example, one here is on the forehead, one is on the heart. It just feels nice to be held in that way. And that's a really good way to help with regulation. And then look after yourselves as well. We can't really help our children to regulate if we're not regulated ourselves. So how do you soothe yourself? look after your own emotions and your own anxiety to be able to be present for your children. And check in with yourselves, have a weekly wellbeing check in. How am I doing? How's my mental health? Am I looking after my wellbeing? Um, how's my thinking? How's my stress container today? And then look at your stress container. How much stress is flowing in? Um, have I got a helpful tap? Does the, does the stress flow out when it needs to? Or do I have that overflow where I have that emotional snapping? Keep an eye on your own stresses. So that brings us to the end of the webinar today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've got some tips there to help your children. As ever, I remain available for parents and all of our Homewood um, House community. So please let me know if you need any support in any way. There's the link there to my website. Um, I use calendly.com booking service and uh, score, school underscore counsellor. And here is a list of the reef references if you need that. So it's been my pleasure to be here with you again today and I look forward to seeing you again next time for our parent webinar. Until then, stay safe. Thank you very much.